a lot of people talk about dots being a good indication that they're really diving into sort of more performant mm. code and stuff. The thing that actually was my favorite change they ever made, which is, I think, the biggest proof that they started to care about the quality of the, the code written in the games, was when they removed the ability to support the dot syntax on components. Mm. That, to me, that, I don't know if people no. remember this, but back before Unity yeah. 5, I in came Unity in 4, all, these, all of these assets on the store used, you could just write dot rigid body, dot audio source, mm. dot... Yeah, yeah, okay. Whatever. I got the tail end of that. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, they they what what that was doing behind the scenes is every time you called this sort of property, or well, it looked like a field more than a property, you just assumed it was something on the object. But again, what you didn't really think about is it's doing a get component call across the board every single time you do that. And they knew people didn't know this. So people would be writing this dot rigid body, this dot rigid body throughout the whole course of the application and, and having 50 to 100 unnecessary get component calls. And so they made the very bold choice to remove mm. that feature. And actually in Unity 5, you can't, it was deprecated, you couldn't do it anymore. So they had to build a tool that would convert old code to this mm. new syntax and replace all of the dots with yeah. get components. And this broke a lot of assets. So they, they did... A pretty brave thing of sort of alienating a large portion of the audience in order to move people towards a better and more sensible kind of structure yeah. for code. And I think not, not a lot of people gave them credit for that. People were just angry that old stuff broke, but they didn't realize the intent was one, it cleared out a lot of deprecated assets on the store, because if you're not willing to update your asset for a change from four to five like that, realistically, your asset's probably dead anyway. It's probably, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. five years old and, and not usable. And so moving to that change was a huge <laughs> deal. And I think They've done a lot fancier and shinier things since, but that one was the one that I was like, oh, okay, they're, they're making people start to think about what their architecture is yeah. based on. You have to now actually concentrate on the fact that it is a component model. And I think that's a very missing part of the Unity yeah, puzzle. For sure. Here. Yeah, it's it's interesting how that is. You know, people get really hyped up about these features that are very, have a lot of pizzazz, but then you think, yeah, those changes, I'm sure they're making changes like that even to this day that are, you know, mm. going unnoticed, but are very valuable. Yeah, like optimizing the for each loops now, you can you can use those without too much of a problem. You still preferentially should be using for loops. They're still yeah. mildly faster. But it, it went from being, oh, there's a ton of garbage allocated to, okay, it's just not as performant as for, which is uh, all these little micro optimizations that are sort of, that go by the yeah. wayside, you know? <clears throat> Uh, speaking of optimizations, there's a an interesting new syntax in dots where you you do you you create a I think a job or something um, that'll run asynchronously, and or rather you mm -hmm. don't have to create the job anymore. So what you do is you call entities dot for each, and you pass in a lambda, and that lambda will get run yeah. you know on whatever however many processors you have and you know multi threaded whatever. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that 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 seems to um, mirror what. Uh, Microsoft did with the task yeah. par task parallel uh, yeah, library. It's, it's nice. So you don't have to do all of the, you don't have to make background workers and actually create thread objects and pass stuff to it. You can just say, magic up my threads, <laughs> please. Make it all work yeah, properly. Yeah, that syntactic sugar is, that is so valuable. Uh, but what's cool about mm. that is that lambdas are actually, they, they generate garbage. But, you know, something they mention is that even though you're using a lambda, when the compiler compiles that particular section, they've done something where it actually will compile it to structs and run it Ooh, some nice. fancy, I don't know. I mean, optimization is not my, uh, you know, expertise, but it sounded like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> they added the syntactic sugar without sacrificing the the uh, the performance. And I feel like that seems to be the trend with the, with Unity these days. They're, they're really going for, mm. for optimization. And they have to because their main selling point is that you can easily deploy to any device and so they got to be able to optimize and to be honest i think part of it too is they're reaching a ceiling on the quality they can mm. hit at the moment because they've gone from sort of looking okay to looking pretty good to now looking comparable to triple a games to the point where they have no more headroom until they start micro optimizing to give themselves more headroom to start throwing in yeah. ray tracing or whatever it is they plan <laughs> to do next so they kind of have to go back and start optimizing the engine to get any better performance yeah, that's pretty cool 